This is Code.org, and we're continuing on with our Netflix Netflix Navigator app. Janir is the spice of movies. All right, so it's so chill and destiny. It didn't take long, so chill and destiny long to realize that most people have a type. Ah, yeah, they want to be able to pick a Janir type. So what are we doing here? Code the cycle Janir image function or method to provide a way for users to scroll through the different genres when clicking the genre button element. Let's unpack this a bit. What the heck is the genre button element? Well, I'm actually going to assume it's this thing, right? Because it says action. Look, if I hover over this, guys, you see how it says ID right there in genre button? Well, bing, that's telling me that's what it is. I can also go over to design and actually click and see, but yep, that thing's called the genre button. So when a user clicks on that, uh, what's it? Code the cycle genre image function to provide a way for users to scroll through different genres when they click the genre button element. Okay, so when they click that, they give us the name of the they give us the name of the method right here, cycle genre image. So let's find that. Oh, and there it is. It's all empty. Okay, and what do they want us? They have this parameter genre uh index. They have the parameter index. Wait a minute. Yes, so they have the parameter, their parameter here is index, so this is kind of off. But their return, they want the URL of the image display that represents the genre from the genre image list. Wow, that's a bunch of words. Okay, well, what's the genre image, genre image list? What are they asking for us to return, for us to provide back when the method's over? Well, here's the genre, genre image list. What is it equal to? Get column genres images. What the heck is that? Well, that must be referring to our data, right? This is kind of a complex one. I'll admit it. And so what's see here? Get column genre. And if we go over to data, we can even see get column. What's first here? Oh, it's the table name and then the column name. So let me go over to data. The table name was genre and the column was image. Oh, so that must be a list, this big old list of the URLs to different images. Right. If I copy and paste this into the address bar, I would see that image. So this is a list of all the different images. And what they're asking then is that we return a single image after this method executes. Wow. All right. One piece at a time. Add one to the argument and cycle through the index values for the genre. OK, well, what's our argument here? It's index. So we are going to add one to that. That we can do. Now, I like doing it this where's my oh first i need a variable that would make sense Boop. and now i need a plusy thing also known as a plus and what am i going to add one to well index so i'm going to say all right index has a new value what is its new value well it's going to be equal to the old value right whatever value we were provided when this method executed plus one the url of the image display that represents the on the list and I'm doing that because we're cycling through the images. Now, there is one other way to do this, and they hint about it down here. We could also use a modulo, uh, the modulo operator. And I'll show you that as well. I think that's more confusing, to be honest. And this route is perfectly fine. Now, you also might see some people being fancy and do index plus plus. This is the fancy way to say this. They're identical, and I think it's harder to read when you're starting to learn coding. So I don't like it. Do I use it in my projects? Yes. Do I ever teach that to students first? No, it's not a good idea. This is more straightforward. Like, oh yeah, index has a new value. It's equal to its old value plus one. Like it much more. All right, so now what do they want? Well, we need to make sure that the index we're using, and this index we're going to be using to get a image from this list, right? So an index of a list is the item in the list. So if I say index zero of this list, now lists in code are weird, so bear with me here. If I say index zero of my image list, well, index zero is actually this right here. Index one is the second item. Index two is the third, right? And so if I say index whatever, it's going to provide me one of those. So that's how we're going to use index. That being said, since we start counting at zero, if I go all the way down here, item 13 is actually at index 12. And we really need to be aware of that because since we start counting at zero, index 12 is the last index. If I ask for index 45 of this list, the computer breaks. It says, what do you mean? There's only 13 things in this list. And it will throw an error. 
If I ask for index 13 of this list, it also will break because there's only 12 indexes. There's 0 through 12 indexes. So there's actually 13 items, but only 0 through 12 are valid indexes. 13 is not. That means it would break. So what we need to make sure to do is that this number is never over or equal to 13, and we can use a condition for that. So I'm going to grab my if else and say if index is greater. Um, uh, let's actually do, since we're using the, instead of hard coding the number, we're using what? The genre image list. So if index is uh, greater than, I'm going to kill off my else. It lets me. Oh, it's not letting me. All right. So I'm just going to grab an if. And I'm going to say if index is greater than or equal to genre image dot length, what do I want to do? I'm actually going to say fine. I'm just going to reset the index to zero. And that makes sure we never go beyond the end. Now, what do they want us to do? Uh, return the image URL, add one to the argument, and cycle through index values for genre image. Okay, so now we need to return that image. However, I would also update this genre index global variable to represent whatever new index we are at. So I'm going to go ahead then here and do genre index equals index. Cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a return. And I'm just going to hammer this out with text. And what we'll be returning is the list genre image, and then whatever index we just grabbed. Boom. All right. Chill box. So what this is doing now is when this method gets called, an index value is passed. I'm adding one to that index, and I'm saying, OK, that's going to be the new image we'll use. Whatever that URL is over here, that's the image we are going to use. However, I then say, wait a minute, computer. If index is greater than or equal to the length of this list, we know something's going to break. And therefore, we're going to set index equal to zero. Uh, genre image. Am I spelling this wrong? Oh, no, I somehow deleted this. All right, there we go. Uh, so if genre image, if index is greater than the length of the list, index is set to zero, we then set our global variable genre index equal to that new index, which is right here because we want to keep track of any changes, and we return this value. Where do we return it? Wherever cycle genre, genre image is called, which is going to be somewhere down here, uh, possibly. But we'll get more into that. Uh, maybe we haven't called it yet. Regardless, we're going to get more into that as we move forward. Now, this is one way to do this correctly. As I said, there is more than one way. So I'm going to real quick show you the other possible solution. I'm going to hammer it out and then just explain it. OK, this is the other possible way to do this. Now, what this does is we still add one to index, but we're using this fancy modulo operator. What does the modulo operator do? It returns a remainder. So if this is 7 and this is 99, what results from this, what genre index will be equal to, is 7. And that's because 99 does not go into 7 at all. 99 goes into 7 zero times. So what is the remainder of that division? 7. Now let's say this is 10 and this is 2. Well, 2 goes into 10 five times. And so the answer to that with a modulo is 0 because there's no remainder, right? Because 10 goes into this, two, uh, 2 goes into 10 five times, there's zero remainder. The reason people will do this is it means that we will always have a number within the range of our index or within the length of our list because we're using this as because we're dividing or we're moduloing by the length of the list, which means, and you can do the math on this, you're never going to have a remainder. You're never going to have a number that's not valid, that's not within the between zero and the complete length of the list. And that's why people will do this. Again, it totally works. It's totally acceptable. I like this way, especially learning to code. It's more readable. It makes a lot more sense usually to people. Both are right. Regardless, onward.